You know, Mississippi is interesting. Um, it's a lot of great people down in the South where I'm from. The family environment, the friend environment. Um, growing up in Gulfport, a lot, I had a lot of support. I never had anybody say, you can't be this, you can't be that. So I was real confident in who I was and, and who I knew I could be growing up. I'm doing things that they said I could. I just got to make them see one time for the underdog. Two time for the struggle, three time for the pain, one time for the underdog. We the one that got the power when it's time to make a change. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the one time for the underdog. Yeah. Brittany Reese, four-time Olympian, 2012 gold, 2020 silver medalist, 2016 silver medalist, eight-time world champion. I actually got into track and field in the seventh grade. Um, I was a sprinter and did a little bit of high jump. I didn't inter get introduced into the, the long jump until the 11th grade when the track coach brought the basketball team out uh, looking for a long jumper at the time. and. Uh, I was, like I said, I was a sprinter, so it was no reason for me to even try. But it looked like an interesting event, so I asked him, could I try? He was like, no, you can't try. You're, you're doing a 400. So I was like, I just kept begging, kept begging. I finally uh, got him to give me the opportunity. I jumped, and it was around 16 feet. He couldn't believe it. He said, go back and do it again. So I went back and did it again and ended up uh, getting switched out of the 400 and back in, and into the long jump. So. I guess you could say who introduced me to it was my, my track coach at that time. Before track and field, I was playing basketball and I dabbled in uh, cross country a year and a half. I was just running. <laughs> my, my friends, they, uh, they were already on the team and previously before that, I think they won state or got, you know, they ended up getting rings. And I was like, oh, I want a ring. So they was like, yeah, try out, try out, try out. And I went out there, we ain't win nothing. But I mean, I was on the team and I never wanted to go back again because I didn't know what we were doing. It was running too far for me. <laughs> we always call it the hospitality state. You know, it's a lot of great people in our state, but I was growing up in Gulfport, Mississippi where um, I had a lot of love and a lot of support from, you know, people that are in the in the city. Um, they showed major love for me growing up from, from birth, well, from when I arrived in uh, Mississippi all the way up to now. Um, they're just uh, all around great people, you know, just genuine love all the way around. It was interesting. I had all the top schools, you know, wanting me and uh, just wanted to be kind of be close to home also. So I took the basketball scholarship, but... The crazy thing about it is I was still getting recruited for track and field while I was on, because I the plan was for me to go for one year for community college and then come to Ole Miss. We were pretty decent, so I was like, I don't want to let my team down, so I stayed two years before I came. What made me make the decision was, so my second year at the community college, a lot of my teammates, I wouldn't say a lot, maybe like three or four of them got in trouble, got caught. We was at regionals, if I'm not mistaken. They got caught smoking weed and got kicked off the team. So we're down to six and a half athletes. And I say half because our, our point guard, backup point guard had a hurt ankle. So she's still like wobbling. So we're at six and a half people. And we, of course we get, we get our tails kicked. And um, I'm upset about it. I call and talk to my mom and she gave me some uh, really good advice and was like, if you wanna make, uh, rely on other people, take a basketball scholarship. If you wanna rely on yourself, go with track and field, so. I went with track and field. When I first jumped on the uh, track and field scene and made my first team, I was I didn't know what to expect. It was I think for me it was more so my first time out of the country, my first time without my coach, my first. It's just like a, a lot of firsts. I think it was just for more so for me just to go out and get the experience and just go out and have fun. So I got eighth. I didn't know what was going on. I, so I was excited to just to be there. Um, but after 2008. Um, after the 2008 Olympics was when I realized that I had have, I have a term professional, so I had realized that um, if I wanted to be this great athlete and I was going to have to win some medals and I was going to have to do the things that the other athletes were doing in order to prepare myself to be on their level. So uh, I kind of went back and talked with my coach and we just uh, changed some things around. I made me sure I got stronger and got faster and 
worked on some things that we felt that were kind of hindering me from being that athlete that I wanted to be. So uh, I just switched my mindset up, you know. You want to be great, you got to do things that great athletes do. I started studying. Like I said, I changed up my diet, changed. I got stronger, got faster, and um, the rest was history. So basically, uh, when you're on this island by yourself, uh, I'll just put it in perspective for me being on my last jump. So uh, I'm on the runway, and for me, I'm thinking about the last conversation me and my coach had. Did I foul? Did I do anything? Like the little piece of advice that he gave me. And um, for me, it's just go out and just jump as far. I, and I say the last jump, I won a lot of uh, meets on my last jump. So I'm like, is you gonna win or you gonna lose? So for me, it's just basically just on this island, picturing myself run down the runway and putting my left foot down as quick as I can and trying to get up off this, uh, trying to jump as far as I can and hopefully do what I'm supposed to do. But on the other end, it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot of mental that goes into that. So like I said, I've learned to be mentally strong and mentally, I don't wanna lose. So win or lose, you gotta go get it. Brie, what, what do you think you developed that killer instinct? You know, it's crazy because I don't even much know. <laughs> like, I just don't, like, I guess I've always been competitive playing basketball. Like, I played, growing up, I played with a lot of, a lot of guys. I went to the rec. I played with, you know, men, grown men playing basketball, out jumping them and doing things. And I just always just hated to lose. And I just had that inner beast. Of, well, they call me B-Reese the Beast. So I got the inner beast that just, when it's time to go, it's time to go. With the long jump, it's crazy because you don't really know until the last jump because, you know, anybody can pop out something. The long jump is about who can jump the furthest on one of those jumps. So I don't think I really knew until um, my last jump, and I think I ended up being the last jumper anyway. So uh, I think for that competition, I was leading the whole thing from the second or third round. I was leading the whole thing, so I was like the last jumper. So once I got on the runway, I actually was just like, shoot, forget this last jump. I don't want, you know, I was ex excited. I cried a little because of all like the blood, sweat and tears. Like that was the only thing that was missing from my collection was Olympic medal. Um, so, you know, it was just a, a surreal moment. And just like, I think I put my hands up crying. I was, I was just excited to uh, finally get that one thing that I've been waiting for my entire career. Everything that they said I want. I'm doing things that they said I could. I just gotta make them see one time for the underdog. Two time for the struggle, three time for the pain, one time for the underdog. We the one that got the power when it's time to make a change. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the one time for the underdog. Yeah.